Hello, and welcome to another edition of Playhouse Live. Uh, I'm here with John. Hello. Hello. Uh, chat, let me know how the audio is this week for John and myself and how they're balanced. I got that a little bit wrong last week. I think I fixed it, so just let me know. Um, but we yeah. Find out. <laughs> um, this is Playhouse Live. This is our weekly newscast where we go over all the important stories in gaming of the week. Uh, today is going to be a, a weird show, even though it's only our second show. We haven't really established a pattern, but it's already been broken because 2020. Today, it's all sort of following one theme. It's about the PS5. Um, I mean, we, we were talking before we started, like, we've picked two great weeks to start a new podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the many things we talked about before we started. But yeah, that's also very true. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's just keep let's keep that under wraps. Um so yeah, uh, let's just get right into it, right? There's a lot to cover. Yeah. This might be a two-hour podcast. I'll try and keep it uh, under, but like we'll see how it goes. Um, so the PlayStation Showcase happened on uh, Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, God, weeks. Um, and yeah, I guess we, we start with the big news, the one that we were all going in there hoping for, the price and the date. Uh, PS5 Physical Edition priced at $499 US dollars. For fifty uh, pounds, digital edition three ninety nine, uh, and yeah, coming out in twelfth of November in US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, New Zealand, Australia, and South Korea. Nineteenth everywhere else because Europe doesn't matter. Yeah, I, when I saw that, I was like, "That's very specific and weird, and just weird to me." I, I never thought of them breaking it up like that, and it's just like I, I don't, I personally don't understand. Like, is yeah. it? supply no, it, chains or what, it, what's going on or they're just like eh, here you go it's totally supply chains and the size of markets um it, okay. the same thing happened with the ps4 they had a staggered release for some reason xbox don't i think it's yeah some to do with the fact that they sell less i don't <laughs> i don't want to throw yeah, that out i there. mean probably yeah but yeah i guess um, that makes sense looking at a u.s japan Canada, yeah. stuff like that. that that's all their huge markets and where a lot of their numbers come from so yeah that does make sense mm -hmm. and uh like for the most part uh they're using planes this time instead of boats but like you ship it and it's like in the u.s market with europe yeah. you're dealing with like 50 different countries all with different regulations and true you, true good point they gotta go from boat to air to tanker i don't the train <laughs> train <laughs> liquid, plane, <laughs> liquid ps5's coming through here <laughs> 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 oh no there's Let's a ps5 spill on the road oh god to hide the children <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no uh yeah i'm gonna we talked a little bit about what we thought the price would be last week uh yeah what do you think what? i think i mean we were on the mark we yeah. both said it like they they couldn't do anything above 499 thanks to xbox and 399 feels right for the digital edition right they could have gotten away easily with um 450 for the digital edition i think but yes 399 considering it's the same amount of power just like not that blu-ray disc which they, a lot of people don't care about that's insane yeah value. I, and to me i'm like what so this thing the disc the disc drive the 4k blu-ray disc drive cost 100 bucks which i said that out loud right now i'm like yeah it actually kind of does so at retail yeah at, at yeah, re at retail yeah. yeah so i was like so that, that's what shocked me like i thought it was going to be like 399 499 that's what i said but part of me in my head was like i bet you it's probably going to be like 450 450 and 500 but hey you know what good good for you sony you're gonna get a lot of people jumping on that digital edition it was uh really funny um because we always talk about the idea that like playstation's just waiting for xbox to announce the price xbox waiting for playstation and they're gonna try and undercut each other um and like some people are always like no they're big businesses like they don't care about our console war squabbles but it was i noticed when watching the the playstation conference back they had that video right where they showed the price and then they had jim bryan yeah. talk a little bit afterwards and he would not say the price he was like and now you've seen the price of the playstation and, 5 and now That's... you've seen everything and you're like i i noticed that too and i was like that unspecified <laughs> price is clearly the best value on the market and it's like <laughs> You've recorded this weeks ago, and you haven't decided a price yet, have you? <laughs> yeah. that, that's exactly what I thought too. I'm like, yeah. you don't know anything. Like, here is price of PlayStation Five, best price on market. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jim. Uh, what? Jim. But uh, yeah, uh, November twelfth. Happy birthday to me. That is actually my birthday. birthday. So I was like, hey, cool. I'm I'm getting a, a 
two consoles for my birthday. That, that's awesome. Now, the question is, though, are you? Did you get a pre-order in? I did actually get the pre-order in. I got it through Amazon. And then a day later, I got Amazon's just death email of, hey, might not show up on time. So here I am now just obsessing over my phone, <laughs> waiting for Wario64 to tweet that Best Buy is live so I could pick it up day one. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of on edge right now because I supposedly got my pre-order in. Don't yeah. know if it'll stick. They could send me an email saying just like, nah. No, so. it, it's done. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. like, I, I got it. I've got the confirmation. But yeah, I'm like, is it really coming? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Bunk clinch time for at least the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, we'll talk a little bit about pre-orders and the whole situation that went down with that uh, later in the show. Um, yeah, it's it's just a, a weird sort of, again, every generation is different, but this feels yeah. like so different from the status quo where you have like all these different tiers. We have the, the Xbox Series S at two ninety nine, then three ninety nine for the PS5 digital, then five ninety nine for the top tier of two, both. And I'm sure yeah. later down the line, there'll be like halfway skews, the PS5 Pro, Xbox yeah, Series half V. Half steps up there. Yeah. I, I still think that might be a thing. I don't know. It would make sense. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Would it make sense? Why V? <laughs> Virtual. Ah, oh, fuck, you've got me. You've got me on the conspiracy. Yeah, I mean, seriously, like, like, why, like, why, like the Xbox Series X is your main console, but then we come out with the the xbox series v virtual where it is an xbox series x without the disc drive yeah play so you, you get the same stats but just no disc drive yeah but weird like hearing people refer to that as the virtual console <laughs> yeah that I, I said that i'm like that's the first thing that popped in my head too i'm like that's weird i don't like that actually but i i don't see them doing that it would be cool it might be like a mid step thing maybe mm-hmm because, I mean, I, I don't know. Cause I, I, I'm a collector. I still like collecting physical discs for the games. So I it and I know you were having the same like trouble with like, do you go physical with the disk drive or do you go all digital? And I, I was in that same boat of which one I wanted to do for PlayStation ended up going with the uh, with the disk drive. But it, it was still like oh, I can save $100 and I'm getting the same uh, power. I. uh I was sure I was going to go for the digital edition after watching that mm. conference. And you can even hear me talk about it if you go back and watch our vod of our reactions that I'm like dead set in the digital edition. Um, yeah. But like in like a weird 4 a.m. haze, I was just like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go all the way. This is it. And just, yeah, I, I got the physical. <laughs> they end up. Yeah. Um, it, it almost makes more sense on our end because like. It is. It's easier to just pop a disc in. Would I you know it's still weird because you pop the disc in and then you got a day one patch and it's still mm-hmm. sixty gigs and like oh I should have just bought the digital one and not have to physically put a disc in. But I I still like the disc. Yeah. Sue me. I have you can actually see behind me like right under my mic here you can see like my list of physical yeah. games and it's not actually that large. Um, like the PS2 is just completely squandered from what I used to have. I sold, like when I was a kid, yeah. I sold most of my good PS2 games. Uh, PS3 wasn't that big. And then like, yeah, this is the PS4 stuff. But yeah, I just want to keep that train going, like move it all nice over there into the PS5 stuff. Uh, yeah. No, I, I 100% agree. I would show you mine, but I'd have to pick up this camera and go to another room. <laughs> we should do that one day, like John on the move. <laughs> I'll do that. That's fine, yeah. Heck Life, yeah, let's do it. Live breaking news from the kitchen here. Rose is making a whole Just pot of coffee. <laughs> um, what is Rose making? It's an omelet, mother of God. It's an omelet. <laughs> uh, no, we'll definitely do that in the future. Um uh, Tim chimes in, uh, always in the chat. Uh, when you think about it, buying a disc version saves money in terms of things like Miles Morales. I don't have to buy Spider Man Enhanced Edition. Very, very true. True. Um, do we? And honestly, do we know if the PlayStation Four version of Spider Man do, gets when you pop it into your PlayStation Five? Do you get like the PlayStation Five version? I tried to find out, and I could not find it anywhere. We will get to that discussion. <laughs> Ooh, I, okay. So I, I'm. That's a hint. For now, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're talking about value for both like the Xbox and, and PlayStation. PlayStation strategy hinges on exclusives and their library of games. Mm. So let's go through what they had to show on the PS5 showcase, which was a very good showcase. Um, again, yes. you can check out our reactions. But yeah, start it off strong with Final Fantasy 16. Uh, 
probably the worst two members of Playhouse you could have right now to talk about Final Fantasy 16. Um, but yeah, yeah, that happened. Seemed like a big deal. There was a lot of cool shit happening in there. I'm excited. You're excited? I'm excited for oh, it, yeah. Tell me why you're excited about that okay, trailer. Okay, so I, I, <laughs> I'm going, someone's going to kill me. I know exactly what two people are going to kill me about <laughs> this. It gave me some nice from soft vibes. It really, Ooh. really did, and I, I was yeah. like, I was like, okay, I, I, I I'm playing Final Fantasy VII remake, and I'm absolutely loving it. I want to pick. I can't wait to play 15. And then when we saw the trailer of 16, I was like, okay, we're going back to a medieval setting. I don't know if it's medieval or not. Please don't kill me. But it, it, it had that medieval feel and the monsters and all the motion and the camera work that they did. Obviously, it's a digital trailer mm-hmm. and, or it was an animated trailer, so you can't really get a good feel of it. But everything they showed, I was like, this is this is very light touching of FromSoft with their action. And if they keep on going with the Final Fantasy VII style of um, the tactics of the fighting and how that works, it just clicks for me. And I absolutely love it. So I'm kind of hoping that's it. Again, I don't know. I just it, it seemed cool. I'm actually excited. This might be one of the this might be the first Final Fantasy that I play like day one. Like I will get it and I will play it. John, I don't think you're alone. I saw a lot of sentiments in here from people who are not Final Fantasy fans traditionally that like they got excited about this trailer. And I can see why mm. it's a lot of fast paced action. Yes. Uh there was like again in the weird Square Enix way where nothing makes sense, but there was like a story. <laughs> Yeah. hidden under like a few layers there um, something about crystals yeah I, I i don't know what that part is but i uh, and it, it did remind me like of a big summer action blockbuster with the fast cuts and just explosions and crap like that and it, it really did have those from soft and actually i got a couple hints of like the witcher when they showed it, the netflix the first trailer from netflix yeah. where like the monster comes from the ground and it's just it there's something about it that i'm like okay yeah, right I'm here. I'm on board for this. We're showing the trailer on stream, and right here in these sequences, we're in like this swampy marsh. Like it, it does. Yes. Look a lot like The Witcher. Yeah. Like, so yeah, some there's of something just clicked. Choices. Yeah. Something just clicked so well for me on that, and I'm like, all right, I'm I'm 100 in on this one, and I cannot wait. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what gets me most excited out of anything is just like seeing Tim and uh, and Keith. Yes. Get excited about it like through <laughs> osmosis. You asked the right question on how many times have you guys watched it? And this was, <laughs> and he's like, does this count the frame by frame time? Like <laughs> yeah. I was like, and I was, I was low. I'll be absolutely honest. I, I, oh no, I was, it was lower than I anticipated yeah. knowing those two. I thought it was going to be like in the thirties and, I was, I know. and it would have been beautiful. And I love that. I think they're trying to piss it out because of how long Square Enix normally take with these things. <laughs> 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but is, was that confirmed? Actually, I don't. I, I don't know. Anything. I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm taking a wild guess, and I was even thinking about this. Where does this land with uh, Seven Remake Part Two? Like, uh, where where do those two like line up in a year or every other year or every two years or? John, it's, I don't know. It's like uh, I don't know how many minutes into the show at this point, but I feel like it's time to make a bet. <laughs> uh. This is a running gag. We really need to make like a, a promo concept of Finn's bet to John. Right. Um, Round one. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. We, what's we, our bet? We need to get, make an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of them all. But yeah, <laughs> it does Final Fantasy VII Part Two or this come out first? Ooh. Okay, so I know on Twitter I saw some tweets going around saying uh, Squeenix, because I actually it's fun to say Squeenix, um, actually has been working on 16 for quite a while. So I don't, mm, and I know they've said part two of seven is going to be a little bit smaller, a little more contained in story. I can't, oh shit. Whatever you it's take, so hard I'm taking the one. I was I'm, about to say, like, I'm sure it's 16 because they've showed it. They were, they were strong enough in Sony, because it's a Sony exclusive, so far we know, is they were like, yeah, we're, let's show, let's start off a press briefing about the PlayStation 5 showing Final Fantasy 16. I'm going to take 16. Okay, I'll take 7, part 2. All right. Yeah. I, I have no confidence in either way on that one, but yeah. You I know what? Know. I'm just going to throw something and be like, that'll work. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there was a bet that, oh, well, it's probably to do with the price, but like, I'll, I'll make sure to look back and see what we both said, and then we can like resolve that yes. at some point. Um, okay. 
but yeah, the next game that was shown a good meaty demo. You know, I love a good meaty demo, John. Uh, meaty demo was uh, Spider Man Miles Morales. Yes. Uh, what did you think I've... of this? Like know, knowing uh, like a, f- a good bit about this game uh, before we came in and just seeing like another lengthy demo. What did you think? I don't need any more. Just just give it to me. Yeah. I'm done. I, I don't care. Like you already had me when we first saw it, and then we actually got to see gameplay. A pretty much a gameplay trailer, which mm-hmm. was absolutely fantastic i love everything about this i loved how they like it's just how beautiful how gorgeous this thing is and what they're doing with just spider-man it's it feels the same spider-man like the mechanics seem like they're going to be the same i add some new stuff obviously miles morales can turn invisible can electrocute people and stuff like that but i that was the game that i'm like even rose was like you need to find a playstation 5 to get on day one so I can watch that game. And I'm like, yes, yes, we will. And yes, that will happen. I, I don't need to see any more. Just give me the game. Right. Um, one of the things I thought was very cool, and this was only something I like picked up on, on Twitter afterward, was the amount of uh, streamers and stuff who were reacting just like us, of mm-hmm. uh, Puerto Rican descent, who were yes. like tearing up at that street fair scene at the start. I- love that like i got to see some of that on twitter as yeah. well where they were just like this is right and this is the proper mm-hmm. representation and like you said tearing up and i was like this is great i i freaking love that yeah like this is just a great scene in general like as i, as I was saying in the uh, reaction video uh like christmas vibes it's gonna be great mm. this holiday um but yeah just this little like puerto rican pop-up street fair i like uh how miles is treated uh in these trailers yeah. and stuff so far it's just very very cool to see yeah, um, I agree. And yeah, representation matters. But yeah, exactly. In terms of uh, actual like gameplay and stuff we've seen, I feel like this is a a step up on even Spider Man from the the original one. Uh, Miles like is a charismatic person. Obviously, we know that. Yeah. Um, some of the design choices for like the bad guys, like these big purple neon suits. Um, yeah, I liked that. It, yeah, it, it almost. It went well with the snow, actually, mm-hmm. like because I remember the snow falling and there was just those particle effects with that and just seeing the, I don't even like the tinker. Am I wrong with that one? I don't remember who they actually said, but I, I'm with you. The purple glow with those masks just kind of worked well with me. That was in fact a tinker. Yeah, you were correct. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and like that, like sort of worked well with the sort of lightning electricity abilities that mm-hmm. Miles has. Um. And yet it was all very fluid as Insomniac are great at this point, but even more so. Yep. Um, one of the things I touched on in the reaction videos was just the like fusion of the orchestral soundtrack and like hip hop trap beats was I incredible. I didn't even notice that. Oh yeah, go back oh and watch Trailer again. That's oh yeah, I'm going to have to now. Like I didn't even recognize that. Yeah, it was just like perfect for Miles. Um, okay. And it was, yeah, it was just really slapping. <laughs> 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 um but no yeah there's there's not much more i want to say about the game uh in terms of like what we actually saw um yeah i just want to play it right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> just give me that game I, just just give me the game it's cool i'm down with this let's go right um then next up was hogwarts legacy how long has this been rumored hinted leaked we all know it's coming it's been a couple years hasn't it like there were the uh because i remember them talking about someone talked about leaking the rpg that is like harry potter like two three years ago i think and here's the thing i have a theory why it's like i'm pretty confident in this theory why they haven't shown off this game for so long go on and it is because the author of the source material has been rampant for years yes on Twitter, yes. and they could never find a good window. And I think after a point, they just said, "Fuck it." <laughs> you know what? Well, did, did you see what they what they said at the very end of that trailer? No. Write your own. Like it was to the effect of write your own story. Ah, okay. So just that little nod, it, because let's be honest, she's kind of gone on a rampage and is like, "You need to shh and quiet now." Yeah. But yeah, it was like she, they made sure to in that trailer, like this is its own thing. This doesn't have anything to do with her. And then I even saw tweets from the developer itself going, no, she does. She hasn't touched this. So yeah. it's all on the developers and the writers of the game. The the one thing I'm like, like I, I 
I said, uh, yeah, I said, I said, all, I'm going to repeat a lot of the, the reactions during basically. That's but, fine. But uh, I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan. I've watched all the movies. Didn't re- yeah. leave an impression on me. Same with Lord of the Rings, actually. I've seen all of the Lord of the Rings and just... Get out! Not mem- <laughs> just not memorable to me. I don't know why. They, those two franchises just never clicked. But sure. I have like very good memories of playing the PS1 Harry Potter game. Um, mm. Never getting past like the opening bit. <laughs> in Hogwarts just because like I'm a kid and I'm stupid and just running around like oh look yeah. I'm Harry Potter oh Expelliarmus <laughs> um, but yeah I did very um, fond with that and like I, I I love the idea of an RPG Hogwarts where you create your own wizard and you have your own Hogwarts yeah. experience like completely separate from Harry and all these other characters um, but yeah it's the thing where they did say that she has no input on the game creatively. But yeah. they didn't and they can't specify why uh that like she doesn't gain money from this. Mm-hmm. Uh whether she does or she doesn't, because that's just like contract talk and like if you say one way or the other that uh yeah. is like breaking the law. And so like I think for me until they say that I can't in good faith give money to this game. Just because, no, like, I, yeah. for for the reasons that, like, a lot of people on Twitter, you will see spite nonsense about mm-hmm. trans, just transphobic shit and horrible shit about human beings. Um, yeah. But, like, JK Rowling's a special case where the reason she's able to do all this stuff and, like, reach this amount of people is because of her power and wealth. And exactly. when you buy into that stuff even if you completely disagree with jk rowling or if it has nothing to do with her creatively you're still feeding her money and you're still like mm-hmm. indirectly funding her yeah i mean she, she created the shit. world yeah yeah she, she created the world of harry potter i read the books when i was a kid loved them loved most of the movies uh and I, i'm with you like it's it's a very like, i i'm not gonna lie i'm probably never gonna play this game it just didn't while well, I enjoyed the games and I enjoyed the book, the books. Um, I played a couple of the games, they were fine, but it never was as magical to me as reading the books. Mm-hmm. So and I, I actually fully agree with you, like in good conscience, being a decent human being mm-hmm. wouldn't want to fund something like this and in turn fund and give money to Miles Morales because yeah. of the exact opposite reason the proper representation, the taking the steps forward that we actually need to take. And then you're right. She has so much power and wealth. And I want to say she's still the richest. Well, no, not anymore, but she was one of the richest females in the world. And um, yeah, I I can't do it, honestly, from just a being a good person standpoint. And it sucks because there's a whole studio of developers in there that I know just yes. want to make a cool wizard game and just and every time she tweets they're just like for fuck's sake like come on like, we're, we're trying to <laughs> like, and, that, and that's the, that's the shitty part on my end is because <laughs> I want to fund good developers I want to help them out and get them their their due pretty much and no one knows how long this has been in development mm-hmm. and how many hoops they've probably jumped through between jk rawlings herself and then the wb backlash that they got for uh the second harry potter or the second new uh fantastic beasts and and so i can only imagine what this company and this development team has actually like gone through to like just play a ninja and try and stay out of the way of the uncom uh the incoming shit storm that is jk rawlings yeah um and yeah i just like I saw a lot of rationalizing on Twitter, like basically trying to separate this from her. I think a lot of that is to do with, uh, I can't remember who the YouTuber was, but she does these great video essays. I'll I'll need to like credit her in the description later, but she did this great piece on like, you can try and rationalize it, but really you're not, you're just not ready to let go of Harry Potter. And I think that's the case for a lot of people. And to that, I will say there are so many other great games to play out there. In the meantime, while you like go through that process of like letting go of Harry Potter, I know it sucks. It uh, does, but it's just it's just the way it is, man. When when you have the stars of Harry Potter mm-hmm. 
and they have to tweet apologizing and making sure they're separated from that. It's kind of one of those things you kind of have to take a look at it from a new perspective. Mm -hmm. So it sucks. Hopefully the game's good. Hopefully something comes good out of it. But yeah, it's it's hard. I agree. Um, next up then was oh, sorry, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Sure. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull something real fast. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I was gonna say, shall we move on? But if you've got something, to pull. oh no, no, I was, I oh, it's gonna be really fast because I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna say something that if you know, you know. I'm gonna do a shoot a man game, and that's it. That's all I want to do because I I don't care. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Resident Evil. I don't know whether to call it Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil Eight. I'm I'm calling it Resident Evil Eight. Okay, then I will call it Resident Evil Village. Okay, and we'll confuse the people. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a non-Resident Evil fan, the sentiment that I got from others watching this trailer is that there wasn't a whole lot new from this that we didn't know before. Other than two things being uh, the like storybook aesthetic for some of the the sequences, which I thought was really fucking cool, um, mm. and the tease at the end of the new merchant, which is apparently a big deal. Um, yeah. But yeah, I this looks cool. I don't like spooks. I I, I, I it's a horror game. Yeah, it's yeah. not for me. I'll play it. Why not? I got to finish seven. Uh, the biggest thing that. I, and I'm with you. I'm not the biggest Resident Evil fan. I I want to start that journey. I actually picked up Resident Evil 2 Remake. But uh, the biggest thing that I put together real fast is there was one jump or one scene where they showed uh, like this. I, I'm going to just call it a zombie right now because I don't really know the terminology. <laughs> a zombie. And it was like big and brooding. And the first thing I remembered was Chris Redfield because I know he's in the game. Mm -hmm. So there was something like the, the character design and just the dimensions kind of looked similar to him. So I, I don't know. I, I'm also remembering what Tim said of like, is this the concept of you either die the hero or be, live long enough to see yourself become the villain? And yeah. something about that just stuck with me since we saw it over the summer. And that first scene, when you watch the trailer, there's something that just it reminds me. Like, and I want to say it's actually the nose, too, that kind of remind me of Chris Redfield's nose. So I was just like, oh, maybe Tim's right. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's Chris Redfield but going off what yeah. like people smarter than me are saying. Um, yeah, but yeah, Capcom's on like a, a good trip right now, so I have faith that this game will be good. No date or anything, not even a year. Yeah, um, I noticed that. That's weird. So yeah, weird. We could do another bet right now where we bet on if this comes out before Resident Evil Four remake, but I'm not going to do that because again, okay. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Deathloop. Tell me what you thought about the Deathloop demo. Okay, so. Remind me, and help me with this. This is the third time we've seen Deathloop, yes? Because I want to say we saw one trailer last year during E3, when E3 was a thing. And then mm -hmm. over the summer E3, uh, Summer Game Fest, we saw another one. And I want to say that one turned me off of Deathloop. Okay. And then this one actually brought me back in. Yeah. And I was shot. I was actually watching this like, oh, cool, Deathloop. And I'm like, all right, let me. It being Playhouse and what we're doing, let me give it a shot. Let me open up and just watch it. And I actually really, really liked it. I like that they went back to that weird, like, late 70s, early 80s, like, funk vibe. And it the trailer itself kind of gave me a better idea of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just a giant game of cat and mouse, pretty much. But I, I liked the time concept now they they described the time concept and what i'm supposed to be doing which made me like okay so this isn't just go around kill a guy go around kill a guy it's no i have to think about the time and what i need to do before hit uh person a gets to something so he goes and does something completely different on a timeline uh, that to me actually was very like okay mm -hmm. all right i'm in on this one let me let me go ahead and try this out the one thing that still confused me by the end of the trailer, and I agree this was a, a very good showcase of this game, um, but the one thing that still confused me is the mystery behind the other character, right? The female character mm. who's hunting uh, the first one, uh, the, yeah. the player, if you will. Uh, me and Tim were still like in disagreement by the end of that trailer for a while about what that's about. Is, the, is this a multiplayer, like, quick match 
Watch Dogs One I, suggestion is this like an I AI? Think it is. Uh, it's like we we they seem to be right, holding back. A bet. You want to make a bet? Let's go. Okay, let's make a bet. Well, All right. So, and, bet. and this is what I think. This is honestly what I think. I think it is multiplayer. Mm-hmm. I think you, as the main character who is trying to time out the hits correctly, are being is being hunted by the female character who is a different person, actually, an actual different person. And so, if I if I start up the game, I've never played before can i just like mm-hmm. choose to be this other character and just fuck with people for the whole time and not play the actual game finn have you played call of duty have you played fall guys have you played insert game that plays with someone else random stranger on internet yeah okay. yeah i'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be because that's what the internet wants to do okay i mean it, it plays right into that concept of you know what yeah i do want to make someone's day suck by killing them before they finish their objective so, yeah, I, I think that's exactly what it is. I will take that bet. I will say that you will not be able to play as the the female character for okay. at least the first six months that this game is on the market. They might add it Wait, later. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so that tells me you think they can. You just want people to get used to being one character and then they're... Then they're going to drop was uh, who, who's developing this? I don't remember right off the top of my head. Arcane. Arcane. No. Arcane Is yeah. it Arcane? Okay. Because they made the so you're, <laughs> you're telling me. All right. You know what? The first six months we're going to you're just going to be a single player campaign. Oh, now it's a multiplayer campaign where you're being hunted. What I think is that the initial vision of the developers for this game is to make it purely single player. And so I okay. think this female character that's hunting you is l- less of an obstacle are more of a story device and okay. and so i think that's what their initial idea is but i think there's going to be so many people that are pissed off she's not playable when the yeah. game launches that after six months they're going to go all right we've had a mode where you can play as this and do the thing that you're talking about and someone can help me remember on this one arcane i know what arcane's done but they've all been single player campaigns yes i don't yeah off the top of my head i cannot remember a multiplayer or co-op at least as far as i know it's game. all been dishonored i think yeah. they helped out somewhat on a wolfenstein game here or there okay i could be wrong on that but yeah dishonored what they're known for that's their yeah. bread and butter okay oh you might have this one then <laughs> damn <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, don't, I i think a lot of people are thinking the way you're you're talking about yeah. it. um I just, Actually, I'm going to be how upset people are going to be when they find out it might be your way. Yeah, because I, I how they a, the trailer looked is that it really does look like it's two player or at least co op. But ooh, but I yeah, think that's hmm. if they are going for your situation. The only reason I could think that they're hiding it right now because they are. No matter what you look about the yeah. game, they won't confirm whether where or the other if this girl's what, playable what she, or not. Yeah, we don't know what she is. Yeah, and or so who like she's being as yeah. I think they're trying to go for like the mystery element of like a, a journey where like you have to sort of figure out that you're playing with another person. Okay. Um, okay. But like that just confuses me even more. And like, why would they do that? It's 2020. <laughs> Everyone knows. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, Q2 2021. So we, we have a little while to wait yet. We're probably going to okay. see this game shown off six more times um, going on Fall the schedule. Fall 2020. Right. Yep. Oh, it's just Q2, though. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Um, I have no faith in that either. That game's getting bumped, at least to Q. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if, like, <laughs> someone came out as a press Q. release? <laughs> <laughs> someone came out in a press release for Cyberpunk. It's not meeting expectations. We've got to bump it a Q. <laughs> Wait, okay, we need to make that a thing. Yeah. Just bump it a Q. Yeah. Right, what do you guys think? Is it going to bump it a Q or two Qs? Yeah. <laughs> It's it's like uh, God. It's just development hell here in Final Fantasy Sixteen. We can't even we can't even say a Q. We're just like bumping it another financial Y. <laughs> All right, I like this. Yeah, I'm on board with this. Yeah, just like stupid marketing jargon. Yeah. Um. Again, part of me wishes we had like Tim in on like microphone, like a buzzing in right now. DMC Five Special Edition. Did you play DMC Five? Played- I bought it. I don't. Ha- I haven't played it yet, and now I'm like, eh, f it. I'm just gonna buy this one so I can yeah. play it. Well, you. Might I, have, I like um, the DMC games. I actually, I've played a lot of them. 
Uh, I'm the weird one that actually kind of liked the DMC remake. I know it wasn't Dante as we know him, but to me it was turn off the brain, hack and slash, and have some fun. But yeah, I, I, I like them. I think they're actually a lot of fun. I think they're really, really good. So I'm excited to not play the PS4 version and just go ahead and buy the PS5 version. Okay. Yeah. Um, which it seems like we'll get to this, but like you'll have to do it digitally. <laughs> yeah 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 we'll get to that one but yeah i noticed that too uh-huh weird um but yeah virgil being playable seems to excite that audience so that's cool to see um yeah. here's my only gripe of the show okay and that is all world soul storm go on why are we showing this game again if we're not having a release date why are we doing it i know people care okay. but like yes Come on. Are you releasing the game? Are you not? I get it. It's a weird, like, post-apocalyptic yeah, world. Hu- and that's a... I don't want to call it a huge niche, but... Yeah. I mean, that, that's a very select group of people who really like Odd's World. I, I know... I remember the cover. I remember seeing the cover when I was a kid. I've never played any of these games. I couldn't tell you what they're about. This and Psychonauts 2 is just, like, release the game already. Like, or, yeah. or, or just, like, don't talk about it. You know what I mean? Just don't talk about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm sure people were excited about that, but yeah, only gripe. Yeah. Is is just like no more old world. <laughs> and it's like, it's annoying because like half the time it's the same sequences interspliced. This had a fair amount of new content in it. But yeah, it's like, I, that's kind of, I'm with you on that one. Like if you're going to show something about a game, give a little bit more, a little bit different. Yeah. Because th- there's that line that you don't want to cross is, all right, stop just give us the game now and i i think odd world and i'm with you psychonauts 2 is is at that point now where you're like you can just give us the game right yeah good um the little guys that follow you at the end were kind of cute but yeah Yeah, (laughs) i'll give you that one yeah (laughs) (laughs) um and yeah it's gonna be fun to see them die horribly so yeah that's kind of (laughs) cool the thing is like old world it seems like a thin game it seems right up my alley i might stream it who knows but we'll, we'll very see lemmings is what it felt like to me. Mm-hmm. Very, very lemmings. Oh, yeah. Lemmings for sure. Um, five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Shall we move on? <laughs> uh, let me. Uh, yes, real fast. Have you ever played a Five Nights at Freddy's? No. I played one. Cool. Yeah. Okay. We shall move on. Yeah. <laughs> we shall move on. Yep. Uh, Demon's Souls. Demon's Souls. Yes. Uh, this is going to be a you gambit because you, you're into the Souls games. You know, um, I all am. I can say about this is that it looked gorgeous. Blue Point have done it again. It looked yes. ridiculously, ridiculously good for like a yes. game that it released in the PS3. Um, and yeah, I thought it's very cool that there are very few demos that you could do um, for a game showing it off where like you die in the gameplay demo. But Souls mm-hmm. games are one of them, and I thought that was cool. But no, just like my only question is like, when are Sony gonna like up and buy Blue Point? Yeah, and like they, they need to buy. They've Blue Point has proven themselves mm-hmm. time and time again now yeah. that they know what they're doing. And I am with you. Like this game was drop dead gorgeous. Yeah, I got I liked the uh, comparison videos on YouTube where you saw the PS3 version and then this version, and it is a hundred percent different. And you're like, it it shouldn't be this pretty mm-hmm. it is a souls game and it shouldn't be this pretty. And i say that but i think all the soul games souls games are actually absolutely gorgeous uh what struck me odd and I, and it's odd in a good way which i really liked it there were there was no hud on this demo yeah and i was like this is great i'm sure that was a an option that they could probably toggle on and off but i am stupidly excited for this game i've played demon souls i got lost i have no idea where i was at partially because i couldn't really tell what was going on mainly because it was a place a playstation 3 game Mm -hmm. but this one is so gorgeous and i'm like yes please let me have this and blue point for the love of god do bloodborne oh yeah please Please do Bloodborne next. But like, surely there's a a, a time period you gotta wait. You gotta wait at least another gen, another G, if you will, until Bluepoint <laughs> are able to like uh, remaster 
so or like, it'd have to be a rebate right it couldn't be a remaster probably i, I don't know maybe yeah i mean it could be just a full-on remake i don't know but i i'm in i'm excited for this one it's going to be this and miles morales are my day one purchases mm -hmm. because i just i cannot wait to get my hands on this game just to almost look around and just kind of walk and see tell the difference between the very beginning of the P, uh, playstation 3 version and then this one because it is it was one of the most impressive showings i've seen of a video game in a long time like it really did its job of like it's it, here here's a from soft game we've made it look pretty let's go and now just be prepared to die a lot i'm uh i'm confused because you said you're gonna like buy this at the ps5 launch right yes but like they never said in this trailer that it's gonna be a launch title for the ps5 at least not till later in this show anyway next up is um uh what was next after that uh was it yeah it was Fortnite. shall we move on <laughs> cool yeah. Fortnite and uh gta 5 yeah playstation 5s nice then uh a weird a weird one uh but a very cool one i think uh the playstation plus collection uh yeah i'm not going to go through the list of all the games but it's basically all the playstation 4 hits and mm. a lot of games you would have seen on ps plus before this generation all packaged into one deal available with your ps plus subscription on ps5 launch to just play and like have at it yeah very cool deal they're not committed to like doing games pass but this is the next best thing yeah for people who skipped a g a generation uh <laughs> this is gonna be like your one-stop shop for like all the all the stuff you missed except spider-man yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to that <laughs> uh, I, I think this is a good idea I'm, I'm with you i think even and I'm, I'm sure we might talk about it sony's said we're they're not going to go after a game pass model mm -hmm. so they, like you said this is the next best things these i what eight games 12 games i'm not 100 percent sure absolute monsters yeah. on the playstation 4 that this is like if you needed the greatest hits of the playstation 4 this is probably it hmm so mm -hmm. there you go on the playstation 5 you can play it go nuts and i i actually like this idea I, th I think this is a good a nice jumping off point for those who either a didn't have a playstation 4 or b and this is where i really think it, this is where it works is you're getting the digital edition of the ps5 but you had obviously you have the disc versions mm -hmm. of the ps4 so this is your the greatest hits that you you probably had on the ps4 now you can just play them on the ps5 without figuring out how to get that yeah. uh, digital edition or having to rebuy it really right um yeah there's a lot of games on here that I, even i haven't played like mm -hmm. bloodborne Ooh. Ooh. Mo monster hunter world Ooh. yeah persona yeah. 5 Ooh. yeah i don't know how i played this but like god of war Ooh, call a doctor mm. Ugh. um but yeah just like and then fallout 4 like whatever um, yeah, fallout 4. but yeah I, the one that got me was like Really, you're putting Arkham Knight on this one? Are we are we sure we want to harken back to what happened with that release? <laughs> I, I I don't know about that one. Yeah, um, yeah, I was in PS Plus a while ago and I have that downloaded. But yeah, that's yeah. There were some weird ones in there. Fallout Four was the yeah. one that was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I guess I just cool. thanks couldn't find anyone to buy that. So yeah, I'm sure I don't know as well. <laughs> it's like it's like John when like the kitchens out of ingredients and it's like late at night so they just throw everything into a stew yeah. and stir it up yeah that's set that out this is playstation 4 stew this. is that fallout 4 <laughs> yeah screw it who cares just go yeah. all, right, all right fine it's it's like three days old it's rotten do you want to put it in there <laughs> look just put it in there someone's gonna like it yeah. and that's what matters we're like all right cool fit it to the cat so at the back you know <laughs> <laughs> um and then, yeah, they talked about the uh, PS5 price and date. We talked about that earlier. And then they yeah. closed with uh, the patented one more thing. The one more thing. I, I petitioned to call it the Columbo moment. Can we can we make that a thing in the future? You're going to have to describe that one to me. Well, no, in Columbo, like, there's always, like, the investigation and he asks the questions and it's like, oh, yeah, I, it couldn't have been you then. That's fine. And then he turns around and he just goes... Just one more thing, Doctor. 
<laughs> oh my. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm John. I've never watched an episode of Homebo. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about, like the show wise, but I did not know that, like, that was an actual thing. Here's the thing. I've never watched Columbo either. Chat, back me up. That's How the, the hell thing. do you know? <laughs> Chat, that is a well-known pop culture reference I made. The Columbo moment is what I'll be calling it from here on out. Anyway, the Columbo moment of this showcase was God of War Ragnarok, tentatively titled. Oh my god, John Afric <laughs> this. Yeah, I did too. I I may have just I, I I got it spoiled because I was at work, but yeah. the fact that I saw Ragnarok and I was like, oh, mother of God, yes. Thank you so much. And here's the thing, John. There's no reason this should get me excited. It's a logo and Kratos' voice actor and just nothing else, right? They completely played us all here for fools. They showed yes. none of the game, not even a cinematic, but it mm -mm. doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. That's how good god of war 2018 was it was so that's how much easy. it left a mark it was so easy so cheap all they had to do was god of war 2021 which i don't believe for a second but won't matter Not a chance. Line. um but no it's just like all about like we showed you the games you're gonna buy at lunch and beyond and here's like you're investing in this ecosystem down the line you'll yeah. get god of war 2 you're gonna yeah yeah i'm good Let, let's you don't have to show anything else to be <laughs> absolutely honest of god of war ragnarok i'm in God of War, I I played, I beat, and I freaking loved that game. It was so good, and I cannot wait for this. I was I was really really hoping that we were going to get some sort of announcement in a year or two about mm -hmm. a God of War two. The fact that we got this Wednesday blows my mind. I'm with you. I don't think we're going to get it until about 2022 anyway. I don't care. At least I know it's being made. I've been uh, playing with the idea of doing like a playhouse game of the generation before this next okay. gen starts i think it would be a hard argue to not put god of war like high on that list oh no as i i yeah. would say top i at least top five i'm trying to like would it be number one yeah yeah number yeah i god of war bloodborne pretty much everything on that playstation collection pack the mm -hmm. yeah, collection. <laughs> yeah. that, i mean that's pretty much it i was like god of war Bloodborne, uh, Persona 5. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of good, good ones. stuff. And so, yeah, that was a perfect way to cap off the showcase, I thought. Like, just really drove it home. Um, and then I say, yeah, really, really good showcase. Almost as good as, I'd say, like, their best E3s, like E3 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a month. Yeah, that was a great one. And then, John, everything <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> it Afterwards. was a high it was literally you saw the high like sony's like we did it everyone was behind sony and then all of a sudden a meteor came out of nowhere and killed the sony bird that was flying actually sony flew too close to the sun let's just be honest <laughs> i have yeah <laughs> right yeah so i think yeah. the best place to start is with like because we were doing the post show at the time i wasn't looking at twitter that was my mistake mm -hmm. if i had looked at twitter the post show would have been three hours longer because we would have just kept going. But <laughs> yeah, okay. um, shortly after the showcase ends, Jeff Keighley tweets out, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a launch title for the PlayStation 5. Not mentioned in the show. Whatever, right? Yeah. Okay, it just said holiday 2020 for no reason, but yeah, it is in fact a launch title. And like anything, you don't even need confirmation from Sony at this point. Anything Keighley tweets, it's gold. You can, you can take it to yeah, the bank. Yeah, you can just... We're good. Thank you, yeah. Keely. Right. So it's, it, that, for some reason, not in the conference, but no big deal at that point. Whatever. They just bungled it. Demon Souls, also a launch title. Again, not mentioned for no reason. Yeah. And it's like, you didn't even have to mention it during the trailer. At the end, you could have just said, hey, these games are launch titles. And exactly. that would have, but they you didn't could, even do that. They gave us a little list. Here are the launch titles and just gave us the three or four. Would have been fine. And then, yeah, sticking with Spider-Man, they announced... The Spider-Man Ultimate Edition, which is twenty dollars more, and includes the only thing you get with the Ultimate Edition, I think, is the remaster of Spider-Man PS4 for the PS5. Yes, which I'm still confused about because the remaster, according to them, is not simply an enhanced next-gen version of Spider-Man PS4. It's an undertaking. It's 4k all the all the bells and whistles bells of a remaster whistles. nice 
Uh, and so, like, that's so, included. So, like, if I so, what it, you're telling me is that I'm buying the seventy dollar version of a PlayStation Five game to get the enhanced PlayStation Five version of the PlayStation Four game that is Spider Man. Well, that's what I don't know, John. Because Good, if, I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> if I put my Spider Man PS4 disc into the PS5, what version am I getting? That's what I want to know. <laughs> like, there, this has been the muddiest concept of. Oh yeah, uh, you and I talked about it last week. What is smart delivery? <laughs> yeah, PlayStation Five almost gives no shits about that. To be honest with you, what like, is you're gonna buy the game anyway? It's twenty more dollars. What does it matter? What does any? Here's of your PlayStation. Yeah, I, I don't know what it means. And uh, I saw a lot of people retweeting today the Insomniac Twitter account saying like, uh, anyone who owns the Spider Man. PS4 will get the remastered version, but that ended up being a fake account and everyone was caught out. So <laughs> it's funny the way they do it. Instead of the check mark, what they do is they use the clock emoji, which is again mm-hmm. a circle with just like the tick symbol in there as like the two hands nice. of the clock. <laughs> but it's so, nice. so funny. Every, every scene ever, I fell for it. I retweeted it from the Playhouse account that I had to delete that tweet. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Damn it. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and then honestly it, it sucks honestly though i'm gonna buy the 70 dollars version just to be safe because yeah. it's so muddy I, i'm i don't know what i'm supposed to do so yeah i'm just gonna do it that way demon souls as well was reportedly coming to pc then yeah that was weird the trailer got taken down and then they removed the pc mention and then a sony representative said to kotaku hey it was just it was an intern it was human error <laughs> it was just some guy yeah. wrote something that we don't warrant that doesn't mean it's not that coming to PC later, because Sony have been doing that a little bit more these past two years or so. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> who knows? At least you don't hold your breath. Souls fans yeah. is what I say. <laughs> um, and then Jeff Keighley again starting the the fire again. Uh, tweeted out. So you're probably wondering about pre-orders, right? So yeah. like everyone was wondering when this showcase end it they didn't talk about pre-orders when are pre-orders it's got to be like a week from now otherwise they would have said uh sony tweeted out on that night that pre-orders are going to happen tomorrow which is already short notice mm-hmm. but then jeff tweeted out uh some retailers are saying it's happening tonight walmart best buy they're they're freaking out it's chaos right and so yeah. like nobody knew what to do they were just sort of standing on watch, like going, what do we do? Do I wait? Do I... Especially UK people, because it was nighttime already. It was midnight by the time this all this shit went over. So yeah, I actually felt bad for you the most when I was, all this shit went down. I was sitting there like, is it happening? These are all UTS retailers. Surely I can just go to sleep right now. I woke up that following morning. I like all the retailers are sold out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then, like, I was talking to my dad, who actually works in the city, and Game, which is our version of GameStop, uh, yeah. he said he passed that, and the lines were going round the block from 8 a.m. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was chaos. <laughs> um, oh, my God. And so I was like, what did I do? I ended up getting mine through Argos, who said we're doing it in this day at this time, so I was able to get in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it was total, total chaos, and especially for the people who are like, don't, aren't as invested in all these conferences and dumb E3 stuff that we are. Like, yeah. we follow all the Twitter accounts. We know where to look. But, like, all these people who have, like, kids and stuff just, mm-hmm. like, missed their shot. And maybe they got a shot, but now Walmart are telling them, hey, you know what? We we took too many. You don't get, yeah. you don't get it now. Well, that was funny to me. Like, Rose and I were actually streaming. And all of a sudden, one of my mods just goes, John, it's on sale right now. <laughs> And so, thankfully, Rose was actually playing the game. I'm like, all right, guys, you know what? You can talk to Rose. I am now, I've got a screen right here. I've got to buy this thing. You have no idea. And so I'm literally, I'm on Best Buy's website, and I'm just hitting the refresh button to get it. And I finally get it in my cart. And I'm like, all right, let's check out. I don't care. Check out, check out, check out. Check out. (laughs) Check out. Son of a bitch, let me check out. And it just, it crashed. And my mod was talking, one of the mods was like, yeah, dude, it is completely down. And so I finally like wiped my hands clean. And I was like, all right, you know what? It's fine. 
Amazon takes forever and a day to actually go live. I, I'm not going to worry about it. And this was on Wednesday, obviously. And so we finished stream and I'm like, all right, we got to watch this conference. So Rose and I went out in the front and watched the conference and I'm just literally phone is on my chest. Just I'm holding it like death grip waiting for a, like a notification to go off. And I'm just like, eh, nope, eh, no. Okay. And then finally, God bless you, Wario 64. Amazon is live. And I, I didn't even blink. And I was just like, there we go. We're done. I've, I've got it. I secured if I'm good. Yeah. But, yeah. For me, uh, it was very backdoor sheet of deals last night. <laughs> um, it was weird because like, so Argos, who is the retailer who, who did my pre-order, um, mm-hmm. they, they said, we're going to go live on Friday. I like, yeah. nobody knew what that meant. Is that midnight? Is that early morning? <laughs> like what's happening? And yeah. so, like, people were tweeting at the, the Argos uh, Twitter account, and some guy, you know the way, like, in customer service tweets, they, like, always put a name down there, so, like, you know, you're talking to a human or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, like, this customer service rep called Aiden and said, it's midnight tonight, Tavern. Everyone, get ready. We're good to go. And uh, so, like, everyone was like, all right, we got it. And I was, like, sitting there, right, we got it. Um and then, like, they followed up that tweet with another tweet saying, hey, our stock doesn't work that way. So mm. it could be any time from midnight to God knows when. <laughs> like, we just oh don't. My God. We just don't know. And we can't tell you. Good luck. <laughs> um, so <laughs> may was, the odds be ever in your favor on this one. <laughs> I was sitting there stressing. And so, like, I, I went live last night. I went live playing Civ and I had Civ on and one window and then i had like a bunch of refresh things on the, the other window and i was just going back and forth uh and so like it was 3 a.m at this point i was actually done streaming because i just i couldn't focus on even the civ game <laughs> that's mm-hmm. how bad i was and so like i was looking at people's twitters and uh first of all it was funny because people didn't see the follow-up tweet and so yeah. we're mad at aiden when the pre-orders didn't go up at midnight. <laughs> so, like, they were like, oh, yeah. Aiden's getting battered in the morning. He better find a place to hide. We're coming for Aiden. Like, I oh got, oh my God. I got kids to drop to school. I'm not staying up all this night. Aiden, where are you? I'm looking for you. And I was like, oh God, Aiden, oh run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Hide away. Just go underground now. But yeah, it was funny because, and this is super like deep cut now, but Argos, the way it works here is like you have mm-hmm. the online component, but you also have the physical stores. And the way the physical stores work is you walk in, and there are no shelves. The way it works is they're just like these tables with catalogs on them. And every okay. every item has a number. And then you punch this number into like an iPad next to the catalog. And then they say if they have it in stock. And then you go up to the front desk and they like pull out of a warehouse for you. That's how that works. What? So there's this online component that's like just Amazon. And then, like, you just, like, order things just yeah. the way any any 21st century retail thing does things now. But then there is the apps. The app that you get on the iPad is also available via the web. And so what you do is someone in the middle of the night tweeted out, like, this random 12-digit code. And it said, this yeah. is the PS5 physical edition. And so when you go to that website, as if you were in a physical Argos store and entered in that code... It would say, you need to choose a location so we can see if we have it in stock. Or you can get it home delivered. And then you press the home delivery option, and that's what went through. But it was like super backdoor shady deals. It was not how it was meant to go down. It wasn't on the online thing yet, but you had to go to this other way of doing it. And then uh, I tried to track down where this code came from. It was just some guy. I DM'd him. He didn't get back to me. I was like, "This this is some insider knowledge. I've no so idea. So you you really are on the fence of <laughs> is this legit? Well, I I'm more confident today because okay the the line they're towing is that if you didn't get an order confirmation email two hours after you ordered it, you didn't get it. That's just that's just okay. it. I did right away, so I'm pretty sure I'm safe. Pretty sure. Yeah, that is the strangest thing I've ever <laughs> heard in my life. Now I'm I'm now like I really want to just come over there and <laughs> try this iPad thing too. I'm like what. <laughs> What are you doing? What? It's <laughs> super strange. It's like a weird like story you would hear about in the 80s. Is like, this is what shops are going to look like in the future. <laughs> I'm, that is the... I'm down, but what? Yeah. 
And so it was very, very strange. But yeah, I got it. It's fine. And if you will, I have a conspiracy theory on why this was as hectic and nuts as it is. You you know I love some conspiracy theories about video games. Let's go. So the showcase happened on Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, there were reports from Bloomberg, pretty reputable source for the most part, they Uh, sometimes get things wrong, that the amount of PS4s are being cut, like produced. Uh, yes. They cut it by like 4 million or whatever in the report. Yeah, it was 4 million. Yeah. And then by the end of the day, the Sony stock had went way down. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that was just bad news. Uh, and then the following day, the showcase happens and all these pre orders live, Sony stock goes way up. Now, I'm mm. not accusing anyone of insider trading because that's a very serious accusation. Yeah, this is. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we're asking questions. That's yeah. what we do here at Playhouse. We're, we're we're looking at different points of view of how things can happen. Yeah. Because you're right. I mean, Bloomberg, that's Jason Schreier, a very well represented, very well connected. He's kind of the end all be all right next to Jeff Keighley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I saw that report too. Like it cut 4 million because of a chip and they're like stock is going to be around 11 million is what that's the number I remember reading. And then we had the showcase and then whatever cluster F that became ordering this piece of shit. Like I'll say it right now, cause it's been up completely frustrating to me, but it has been a nightmare and yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Like stocks go down, <laughs> stocks go up. Yeah. There's something possibly there. I'm just wondering, not no accusations from this. Yeah. Just, huh? That's a little weird. Nothing inquires a class action lawsuit for no, no. Playhouse or us individually. And but, individually. It's just, it looks a little funky. Yeah. That's all. Um, but yeah, it was just weird. Last Keely tweet of the day. Uh, there should be a graphic for that. Keely tweets. Um, Keely. <laughs> he resurfaced an old video of that he was interviewing for Summer Games Fest, the head of marketing for PS5, uh, basically saying that, like, hey, we'll let you know when pre-orders happen. I think that's the frustrating thing about it is they were going with that line forever. And then, yeah. again, it's just like people with kids and people who aren't as tuned in just like mm-hmm. missed it. <laughs> you missed it. You blinked, you missed it. It's gone. Yeah. It yeah, was... that's that's kind of the kick in the pants for yeah. the whole thing. It's just, oh, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry, guys. We'll let you know when mm-hmm. it, you're going to have plenty of time. Welcome to the Hunger Games. Good luck to you all. Yeah. And... uh so yeah, it was super, super stark compared to like Xbox's policy where they let you know way in advance. Uh, mm. What's the, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday they go live, right? With Tuesday. pre-orders? Yes. And yeah, I was wrong last week on our podcast. I thought it was this past Tuesday. Yeah. No. I got my weeks mixed up, but yes, it is this coming the 22nd. Yeah. And so like they've been tweeting out recently like, hey, here's how it's going to go down. Here's the list of retailers we're letting you know to go to. Here's like country by country what time each are going live. Um, My God, it's like they want to give you the information <laughs> to make sure that you can get a, a console, the exactly. next generation console. Yeah. And it's like huh. another example of like Xbox team doing everything right and not getting mm. half the credit <laughs> for it. But yeah. um, on this occasion, it's just like it's hard to just like because again, they, they even went as far supposedly as like saying, hey, if you break the embargo here, we're not giving you any more. <laughs> We're just going to mm-hmm. keep you from getting Xboxes. And so it's like, fair play to that team, man. They know what they're doing. They have their heads they, screwed They've got on. it on lock, and yeah. I've I've really enjoyed it so far. Yeah. And so, like, um, with regards to the pre-orders, Sony came out today with a tweet uh, apologizing for the whole situation. They said, let's be honest, PS5 pre-orders could have been a lot smoother. We truly apologize for that. Over the next few days, we will release more PS5 consoles for pre-order. Uh, retailers will share more details and more PS5s will be available throughout the year. Um, good on them for apologizing, I guess. They didn't have yeah. to. Um, but yeah, like, they must have seen this coming. Like, they ha- like it's not like Xbox would... for like, we got this strategy and like, we, we've been prepared. It's like, it seems so simple, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one of those things. You, your console was going to sell no matter what. Let's be honest. It was going to sell. Mm-hmm. So... Why did you, A, say, oh, don't worry, don't worry, guys, we're going to give you plenty of time. Okay, so it's coming tomorrow. Good luck to you all. It's now. Yeah. And it just, it's, 
the messaging behind that. Obviously, it's just a giant. And here's the thing: not even what from them, from Jeff Keighley. <laughs> yeah. Why is Jeff Keighley doing the things you should have talked about in your conference? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Why? Why was none of this told? Said in the conference. Why didn't we know what's coming day one? Yeah. Why didn't we like? You gave us the date, of the the street date of the PlayStation Five. You gave us the prices of both of them. Why didn't you say somewhere pre-orders starting? Uh, screw it. I'll just go with the twenty second right now, just because that's what we know. Don't do the twenty second because every system, every like Best Buy will crash again. I know it. But why did you just say the 22nd? Then like today, go, hey, we said it was the 22nd. Here's what it's going to be. Eight o'clock in the morning here, 10 here, 12 here. Just like, it's crazy how much we as humans just want information. The right information and not react. Maybe I'm asking too much. Yeah, I don't think you are. And like that was like the pre-hour stuff is just chapter one of the fiascos, right? We already talked about Demon's Souls and Spider-Man being launch titles and then just not talking yep. about it. And then afterwards they tweeted and like and PlayStation blogged about like what the actual list of games you could play at launch is, which mm-hmm. is, if I bring it up right now, Spider-Man, Demon Souls, um Astro's Player, which is pre-installed, uh yep. Destruction All Stars. <laughs> I think that was the roller. Didn't they do like a quick cut of like all these games in the yeah. conference and one kind of looked like a weird like roller derby thing? Well, it's, I think it's, that's it. It's Ubisoft's or... roller derby thing. Oh, no, no, sorry. Oh, that's no, right. No, no, sorry. I'm completely wrong, but that roller champions is Ubisoft's weird roller derby okay. thing. Destruction All Stars is like Twisted Metal meets Rocket League. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so there's that, cool. which they never talked about. They did talk about yeah. it last conference, but again, didn't just mention it here. Um, and then Sackboy's Big Adventure, which apparently this is just a, is. a nugget of something. Uh, apparently, Sackboy in Japan is called Ribbits. I'm sorry, what? It's, it's called Ribbits because Jeff Keighley tweeted out like this list, and at the end, it's Ribbits Big Adventure. I was like, the fuck is like, Ribbits okay, Big and, Adventure? And I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to be a dick on this one. Like what a frog, like ribbit, like a frog makes the sound ribbit. Yeah. Well, he doesn't in Japan. In Japan, frogs make the sound ghetto ghetto. <laughs> that's one of the, that's, I don't even, that's a weird that thing. True? That, that's totally true. Uh, it's one of the weird things <laughs> that like fascinate me that different languages have different sounds for what okay, animals. Yeah, that's true. I, I know Rose tells me some about French, like some animals in French, they make a different sound. I guess that doesn't make, that's true. Hey guys, who knew you were going to learn more about not just video games here on Playhouse, where you hear two guys talk about video games, but what animal sounds make Playhouse straight to you? At this point, when you're talking about Sackboy and Ribbits, you got to think like Sony messed something up along the way. If I'm talking about this <laughs> on my weekly newscast, like something's gone awry. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Jim Dryan had an interview yesterday with, or either yesterday or today with the Washington Post, uh, mm-hmm. talking about. 99% of PS4 games can be played in the PS5 at launch. Should have mentioned it in the thing, whatever. Yeah, that would uh, be great to know. And the PS4 community will continue to be incredibly important to us for three or four years. And That, that is one off blows the back my of, mind. That is off the back of Sackboy, and even more importantly, Horizon Forbidden West coming to the PS4 as well as the PS5. Yeah. I have... <laughs> I have no words for that one, to be absolutely honest with you. That one, like, okay, I I understand supporting a console, the older console, for a while. I do. I get it. Obviously, I mean, let's. we're not going to talk about it, but they Nintendo just stopped production of the DS. Mm-hmm. We're three years, almost, yeah, three years, almost four years into the Switch. I get it. That's fine. That's weird to me. Like, And it's not something, it, it, it kind of makes me go, all right. We know people aren't going to jump onto the PlayStation 5 bandwagon. So here's those games so you don't miss them. Because do we even know, like, Forbidden West, is that confirmed 2021? No, but I imagine it won't be. It, it, it'll, it'll have to be 2021. I Surely. Yeah. God, John, don't even put the idea. No, no, no we're there. There, That is one bet I am not going to take with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um no, let's do it. Come on, but 2021? Yeah, it's like... Yeah, 100%. 100%. 
I thought take twenty. Right, I'll, I'll take 2022. I thought it was this year, only I was hesitant to pick it up for my fantasy league, but like... I was too. <laughs> God damn it. Um, yeah, it's just... It's just undoubtedly a good thing that you're supporting the old generation but this is coming mm-hmm. from jim we believe in generations ryan <laughs> like yeah and so yeah. it's like a weird halfway point like did they like it's sackboy is one thing horizon forbidden sure. list is yeah, that- i'm with like sackboy i get like okay put them both on both consoles that's fine we didn't get a um Little Big Planet on PS PS4, did we? I don't. I really don't remember. We did. We got Little Big Planet three, three. Okay, so uh, so I, I I follow that concept because it's a family game, quote unquote. So you can you can do that with kids and whatnot. I get that, but wouldn't you want to be like planting your flag? PS five. This is why you need it. Horizon Forbidden West. I I honestly I even understand Miles Morales. I get it. Because it's at the very beginning, you kind of need those bridge games. I get that. Yeah. But I, I'm really shocked that Forbidden West is not PlayStation 5 exclusive. Uh-huh. And this is something I didn't put on the dock, but I, I, I think it's interesting to bring up here that Jim Ryan uh, also mentioned in some interview, I wasn't sure if it was this one with the post, but he mentioned that they didn't ever intend on doing like a less powerful system and yeah. because it, the reason why is because he said they've never worked in the past which i will refer you to switch Lite and xbox one s and all these other ones but like that's besides the point but like mm-hmm. if the whole point is you want to make games tailored to a specific powerful hardware then yeah. why are you making this for the ps4 <laughs> why are you not no, I- yeah I agree. And, and there, the other factor to this one, it just using what you just said about the uh, lesser or less powerful systems is, Finn, do you have a TV that's going to be able to run the uh, series, not even the series, but the PS5 at its full capacity? Uh, I can do 4K 60 hertz. I know okay. PS5 is capable of 120. Um, yeah. I definitely won't be able to do that. But yeah, I, I bought that TV like this past year. So, okay. It was and a while, yeah. You did it. I did it. I bought a TV that can do 4K 120, mm-hmm. and I, I just for these consoles. But I mean, I, I, I can't. I don't want to assume, but I can venture to say, like, no one's really jumped on the 4K bandwagon outside of us gamers and stuff like that. So it's kind of one of those. I, I understand what he's saying, but on the flip side, here's this Xbox Series S that can do a lot more, mm-hmm. but at a cheaper cost, and you still get the games. Yeah. Like, 1440. 1440 is not bad at all. 1440, 120, not bad at all. And most, uh, I, mean, I don't want to assume, every interview that I've seen or every interview I've read with people who are playing video games, especially, like, first-person shooters, what's better, 4K or higher frame rate? And I've seen a lot of people just say, you know what, I'd rather have the higher frame rate. Jeff, Jeff it, everything's uh, everything's going so fast that the higher frame rate makes more sense. Yeah, I like I have been able to game at 4K yet, so I don't know what it's like because I have my standard PS4 sitting there. Uh, I'm waiting on yeah. PS5 to see what it, all the hype is about. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, Jeff Grubb was that mentioned in the same thing on Twitter. Like, uh, 4K, um, 30 FPS will be like good somewhat yeah. if you're close to your TV, which uh, let's be honest, a lot of people aren't. Because yeah. living in my bedroom setups, but 1440p at 60 fps is a way more noticeable upgrade, mm-hmm. and like a lot of people will prefer that. And like, yeah. Xbox Series S is going to be totally suitable for that. Like exactly, yeah. Uh, especially I, if you're doing this cross generation stuff, like it, it doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't only know. time will tell. Yeah. Um, I think that was. The entire list of atrocities, uh, but the after uh, PS5 debacle. Um, but what I will say is, at the end of the day, nothing. We can scream all we want; nothing mattered. We both bought our PS5s. Yep. I said a very. I expressed a very similar sentiment. 
a long time ago where I said the PS5 controller could have like spikes coming out of it, like actual spikes that hurt your hand, mm-hmm. and it will still sell more than the Xbox. <laughs> That's just the market we're yeah. in right now. It's exclusives exactly. mean that much. The games they showed at the showcase is enough to. There's at least one game for everyone, right? That that yep. sucks you in, uh, and that's just it. Like if you can play a game on one system and you literally can't play it on another, like that's that's the ball game. <laughs> games games sell consoles. Oh, we yeah. buy you and I Playhouse. All of us we're in it a little more deep, so we buy the console for the console and to do it. But everyday people, the mom and dad for kids, all that stuff games sell consoles so mm-hmm. that, yeah. that's what the end all be all unfortunately yeah. and fortunately depending on how you want to look at it <laughs> oh dear yeah one more thing i forgot to mention one bullet What's point that? of fiasco uh final fantasy 16 was uh talked about as a console exclusive and also available on pc in the showcase square Enix later come out and said that uh it's not coming to PC, at least not yet, okay. and also it's a timed console exclusive, so the language about oh. console exclusive... Well, they, actually, they didn't say... They said they said something... They said it in a weird, really weird way, where okay. they're not saying that it's coming later down the line, but mm-hmm. they might not be as console exclusive as you thought. <laughs> okay. And it's always weird Kinda to like me the you- language they choose to that, like... Especially Xbox do go weird with it sometimes where they said like console exclusive premiere of for time to, and it's like, well this is also coming to PC, right? And then it's also on Switch. And it's, yeah. it's like just they need a not on PlayStation sign or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause that's what yeah, it that, that was weird to me. Yeah. I, I don't know, at first when I thought it was a con I didn't even know that it was a timed or whatever you want to call that. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. I mean, mm-hmm. when you think of Final Fantasy, what console do you, does your head automatically go to? Sony, PlayStation. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that good business deal. Sony's got it. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. I know there's the whispers of Final Fantasy VII Remake going to Xbox. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's just one of those things. That, yeah. That, yeah, there's been a lot of just mixed up backwards. What are you talking about? What is this message? Wait, what? Why? Why are we doing this? this past week and it's been exhausting to say the least yeah really really exhausting for sure to try and keep up with everything head to toe mm-hmm. um and yeah I, I i said this last week it's like it feels way more complicated than even last gen where we were talking about like can yep. it play used games or not now we're talking about what smart delivery means and whether i'm getting the ps4 version the ps4 pro version the PS5 version. And, and don't forget, they it was confirmed that, unfortunately, the PlayStation 5 is not going to play PS3, 2, or 1 games now. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was the end-all, be-all for a lot of people. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they, they talked about it a little bit in that Mark Cerny snorefest, okay. which wasn't a snorefest <laughs> for me, but it was for a lot of people. It's just yeah. what it is. Um, And they were like, yeah, they were talking about the specific hardware, and they were talking about backwards compatibility and they were like does that mean we can do it or not and then yeah they've officially confirmed this week no mm-hmm. um which they bullshit they could totally do if they wanted to with emulation mm-hmm. but they're gonna like they're almost playstation's almost like nintendo light these days <laughs> uh, you and i are actually on the same page because <laughs> i was about to say the same thing i'm like i'm starting to see like maybe they talk to each other a lot more and they're very <laughs> they're starting to get to a nintendo concept of we're just going to sell you the same game yeah or Make a Mario game that's all emulated. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know how committed they are to PlayStation now. That seemed to be years ago when they bought Gaikai. That was their mm-hmm. initiative for like sort of making things backwards compatible through streaming. I don't know yeah. how quickly streaming is going to take off. I don't imagine it will be until at least the next generation. Um, Let's ask Stadia. <laughs> that was another one of our bets from last week, right? Will it live? Will it live? Chat, will Stadia live? Yes or no? Um, oh, that was one of our bets. Yeah. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. I wonder where PlayStation now live, right? Because they talked about we're not doing a Games Pass subscription model despite the fact mm-hmm. that they currently have a Games Pass subscription model and it's called PlayStation Now. And what I always found funny was when Games Pass was taken off that, uh, and this was like after Games Pass had launched for a year. So this was already like we're in the weeds now. In terms of game subscription market share, 
PlayStation Now was at like 60%, which mm-hmm. was way more people than I thought ever were in PlayStation Now because I never heard anyone talk about it. And uh, they sort of doubled down this past year with like, we're putting God of War on there. We're putting yeah. all these big things that aren't new, but like still good. <laughs> they were, if they were timed, yeah. and you could actually download them. That that was the the <laughs> biggest thing I was because I I actually previewed and like beta tested the first run of PlayStation Now. Yeah, and it, like it only had like five games, and it was interesting. You could, it, but back in the day, you could notice just it was so laggy. But I mean, I haven't. I I don't have PlayStation Now. I never found an actual need for it. Mm-hmm. I. PlayStation Plus is good enough because it gives you the free games. But yeah, I, I do remember like God of War was maybe a year ago where you could download it right around Christmas and you had it until I want to say like the first week in February. Yeah. And then it just poof went away. Um, This is a super weird tangent, but it's like a PlayStation special episode. So like, why the okay. fuck not? <laughs> All right. <laughs> do you remember in the PS3 days, a thing called PlayStation Home? Yes, 100%. I walked yeah. around that place a lot. It was trippy, kind of cool, and a lot I still remember I still know it like a lot of people are sad that it's gone. Oh yeah. Um that feels like one of those things in like 10 years time we're going to tell like the the youth of the gaming world about it, and they're going to be like what the fuck was wrong with Sony? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> what were they on? Um but well, no, kids, like, wait wait no, I got it. I got it. Kids Take off your uh, like your VR headset and Ready Player One concept. We used to sit down with an actual controller. I know it's a Switch controller because my PlayStation, and actually walk around in a digital world. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's <laughs> uh, gonna be funny. Um, but yeah, I miss PlayStation Home. That would be cool if like they reinvented PlayStation Home and put it in PlayStation Now, so you could stream yeah. games, but. You have to be on a couch in the PlayStation Home world. <laughs> okay, I don't hate that idea. Actually, that's that's pretty good. Actually, <laughs> playing PS2 Ratatouille just like in your little <laughs> avatar, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, we got our PlayStation Fives. We'll be there November twelfth yep. and nineteenth, respectively. I don't know if we want to talk about it yet. Well, we have plans in the works to do a stream of some kind on lunch yes. night. Uh, to try and go over like all the new bells and whistles and mm-hmm. maybe play a bit of Miles Morales or, or Sight Boy, God forbid. Um, obviously, I won't have mine yet. So it'll be a, a must be nice situation where I'm just going to be like, oh, John, look at your PS5. Uh. Uh, that, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm very, okay, I'm very happy Sony actually said that they're going to have more out. As soon as I can get my hands on one or I can pick one up on at Best Buy on the 12th, I'm. One, once I'm done, I'm 100% canceling the Amazon one. <laughs> so I, just, yeah. I wanted the day one. I'm I'm that person. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yes, we'll have an Xbox Series X. I'm, I'll order mine on Tuesday. And then we'll have a PlayStation 5. And, yeah, I, I, I'd i like to do a stream where we can, like, all, all of us sit down and then chat and ask questions of, like, what are settings like, all that stuff. So, see if we can get into the nitty-gritty and then actually play a game and figure out the loading times obviously on twitch we have to remember it's going to be a little delayed but mm-hmm. should still get a fairly decent idea of what it's like right. i think that'll be a lot of fun um so yeah keep an eye out for that where again we're on the the train to next gen to to um yeah i i imagine your pre-orders with xbox uh series x is going to go a lot smoother on tuesday than this one um yeah the biggest thing i'm concerned about is how how fast they'll sell it because i i want to do that payment plan i want to mm-hmm. see what that's like right so with, that's, that's my only like do i have to wait to get like approved or yeah. i mean i understand that it goes through credit but maybe it's like an instant thing mm-hmm. i don't yeah. know that's that's the one saving grace about sony strategy is like no time for scalpers to react just everyone frantically Everyone's run there. towards the the virtual mall but like this time they're waiting like a like a western standoff yeah um yeah. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll talk about it on next week's episode of yep. Playhouse Live. John, this episode was not to ours. It was getting I'm there. I'm shocked. But it wasn't. <laughs> Looking at our show over a uh, run of show, I was like, oh man, dude, we're going to be talking like two, three hours, yeah. which is fine. I love no. talking video games. <laughs> we, we we covered it. Obviously, like even like most episodes won't be this long, but uh, I feel like we had a good amount to talk about today. Um, yeah. I'm going to say with absolutely no confidence that it will be a, a bit of a slower news week next week, but who knows, man? 
Uh, oh my god could have cursed us could have cursed us could have cursed us um (laughs) but yeah uh we will be back here next saturday to talk about anything that can and will happen um in the meantime john do you want to promote anything what what our couch is doing this week that you want to talk about couch capades monday wednesday friday at twitch.tv slash couch capades uh we're just gonna play games let's be honest final fantasy 7 uh thousand year door we're starting a new one and then i'm gonna go back to breath of the wild Ooh, so saucy all sorts of games yeah i'm currently trying to figure out right now like what backlog games i want to commit to before the next gen yeah and like i I said to tim i was going to cut off like my backlog once the next gen starts and then they announced the ps plus collection and tim's like they're Mm -hmm. following you (laughs) so you know it's always there it's like it's always there no excuse not to play bloodborne uh no it's it's fine right now i'm really vibing with valkyria chronicles 4 but then after that i don't know uh we'll see um but yeah uh until next week then uh i've been finn he's been john John. uh Um, and yeah we will see you next week bye bye